All right, what's happening, fam? L.A. All Movement Still Moving. Uh, book is entitled Lessons from a Non-Custodial Father at Amazon, Kindle, and Create Space. A link will be in the description box below, as usual. This video is entitled, you can, go get it. This video is entitled, You Can Easily Become Your Deadbeat Dad. In quotations, right? For this reason, I did a video a long time about the, the evolving deadbeat dad. So, <clears throat> being a deadbeat dad, from what we, we, we ex the old definition and the new definitions are two different things. And I'm saying this for you young cats who going to wind up becoming fathers or who are adults thinking about being fathers and you're apprehensive. <clears throat> Here's what's going on sometimes, okay? There are men who are definitely deadbeat dads and what I mean by deadbeats they know you're their child they choose not to be involved and they don't care about you whatsoever and it's abundantly clear day in and day out they've they've made that bed they lay in it now there's another side to that though that I'm that I'm speaking on the side where you can be just like your deadbeat dad because it's culturally acceptable to um, to alienate a father from their child. And this is going to go for the men and the women. So, some of you guys might be having a kid, might have had a kid or thinking about it. And you're like, my dad never did this, my dad never did that, my dad is this type of person, that type of person. And you only got your mom's side of the story. And your dad may have been reaching out to you for years. But because you believed your mom's side of the story, you participated in alienating the relationship between you and your own father. So if you can understand that you got played in that situation, you can understand if you have a child, they, the very same thing could be done to your child. They can be made to believe that you're an evil person and never get your side of the story. This is how you can easily become your deadbeat dad. Part of this culture, part of this culture, what I mean is this. Um, see, technology is a whole lot different than it used to be. I, I grew up with rotary phones and, and whatnot, right? So... Before caller ID, people call, you pick up, you got to talk. But, but now, you know, you got dads who can call, who can FaceTime, catch you on Facebook, uh, uh, Instagram, DM you, you know, Facebook Messenger, uh, Duo on Google, uh, um, um, Skype, um, everything, just everything, right? Just pretty much everything. Hangouts, all that stuff. So now... Some of you people are ignoring your dads and saying that they're deadbeat dads. And some of you have to, have come, haven't come to that moment where you're like, you know what? This could easily be me. If I have a kid, all they got to do is say, don't answer that phone. You shouldn't talk to them. You don't have to talk to them. You know, you have, they have families who tell children that they don't have to talk to their father. Which thus in turn will make you a deadbeat dad in their mind. They, I don't, y'all don't gotta talk to you, but you was never there for me. That's the logic, right? Now, what happens in this logic is a few things. You start growing up, and people start questioning if your dad is a deadbeat or not. As you start telling the story, they might see your dad call, but you not answer. They might ask you, well, why are you not even talking to them? And when you give them the story, the story doesn't make sense. And they're like, that don't, it, you actually think that's a real reason not to talk to your dad because your mama said so? Because your mama said he was mean and evil? That's a real reason. He, he, he's disrespectful. Are you disrespectful? But I've seen you disrespect your father on plenty of occasions. I mean, it's disrespectful to not answer the phone, to hang up. It's disrespectful to, to pick up the phone and talk crazy to him like 
it's okay. Like, that's disrespectful as hell. You think you wasn't going to get checked because you did that? Like, no father takes disrespect. Well, problem, right? Uh, you move forward. You start hanging, you start dating women, and you start, you know, wind up dating single mothers, or just women who are the daughters of single mothers, and you start peeping a little sneaky stuff that they do to create division between a father and a child. And it's like, y'all say he he messed up, but y'all not do did y'all don't y'all not handling this right. Something's off with this. And then you see women who are single mothers and they're doing stuff with the kid. And you're like, no, it's not him. It's you. And you start, and sometimes you're going to have that come to Jesus moment where you see somebody else do the very same thing that was, that, that, that your mother did with you. And then it's going to, you know, you're going to be thrown off like, wait, because you, you're going to see the child react in the same manner because this is cultural to this point. It's cultural. And you can, you realize, well, if I had a baby with this chick, she could do the same thing to me. And the kid uh, think it's me and hate me the same way that I think it's him and I hate him. Wait, something's up. But you, you're stuck in that, that programming phase where my mama would never do that. My mama is a good woman. She's a good... And you got to ask these guys over time when they see their, their, their mothers objectively, like... I wouldn't date my mama. I wouldn't marry my mama. If I wouldn't marry a woman like her. Not as far just just in character. And then you when you get to that point, if you're looking objectively and that's your answer, you start questioning like, oh man. Wait. If my mother has a bad character, then that means everything that she said ain't the truth. Now, which is 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 um cause for problems now another thing that goes on in this is the idea that it's okay because a lot of y'all participated in this disrespect and your mother and your mother's family were all in on it and that was all good it was all good and you have situations where some people may have uh, siblings from different fathers, and you see, you know, you can see a situation where one father is actually involved because they can co-parent with no problem, or they, or they have, or your mom has a crush on that guy, or whatever it is, and but she can't co-parent with another guy, or she doesn't want to co-parent with another guy, and she, she, she stops him, or she gets in the way of him being involved in his ch child's life, and you see that coming up, and you're looking like. And sometimes, you know, the, the good relationship is the, with the one that cares about their kid, and the bad relationship is the one that they feel doesn't care about their kid. And sometimes the good relationship is, the, is with the one who doesn't care about their kid, and the bad relationship is with the one who does care about their kids. And it starts to you start to say, wait, it gets very nuanced. It gets very tricky. And you realize, man, I could easily be in one of these situations. And this comes a point where you got guys like, you know, this wouldn't happen because you hear grown men telling other men, well, if you marry these women, uh, if you stay with them, you, you, these kids wouldn't be fatherless. If if you feel like your your the, the 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 woman the if you feel like your mother has bad character and you wouldn't marry her, I'm just saying like. And you wouldn't marry a woman with bad character as a way to keep your child. Because cause you would be rewarding them with a whole lot for a lot of, for bad behavior, which is, which is against one of the basic principles of parents, and you don't reward bad behavior. But that's what's going on. And, and then guys 
and and not to mention guys did that in the past and it didn't work out. This is why you you hear guys being called simps and suckers because they played the stepdaddy role, because they were trying to marry these women to make them honest women, and think that and thinking that that would change their attitudes towards men and and, and we can see that didn't work out, right? But that's what's going on. But so you can easily wind up being that man. Same way, like I said, with the family setup. You can easily see yourself in that position. On the flip side, real quick with the women, right? You see young women who can e- who learned one or two things. That they don't want to make a man a, a deadbeat dad because they didn't have a father because... Or that they do want to make a man a deadbeat dad because they want to be, quote-unquote, the mother and the father. And one of the things you see in this is um, when the switch turns on with the women, when they be like, you know what, if you don't do what I say, I could do this, 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 and mess up your life. And then the girls start to tick and like, wait, I know I can do all these things. And if these are the things that I know I could do and get away with, and this will create this kind of environment. And I got daddy issues. I'm recreating the same environment that my mama created. So what if dad wasn't everything that mom said he was and mom created this environment and I just ran with it. And now I think it's either a norm or, you know, out of frustration or emotion, I know I could do this in a negative way and get away with it. And then it's like, wait. Because these women have the power to easily make you a deadbeat dad. They don't have to say, if you could propose to them, they don't have to say yes. You could work work out parenting and co-parenting with them. They don't have to say yes, agree. You can take them to court and get all the court documents. They don't necessarily have to, they don't have to abide by them. And they know this, you know, they know you're going to be vilified anyways, and they can take advantage of that. But the problem with that is once the, that switch gets cut on, they start looking at the, the mother's like. Because for some of you younger guys, y- younger men and women, even in your, your teens and 20s, you're going to hit a, a point where you're going to have to put your mother up for examination. Like, that was you. All that, that was you. That wasn't him. That was you. And once you hit that point where you can place blame on your father uh, honestly and, and blame on your mother honestly, you can see how easy it could be done to you in all honesty. And you can see how, as you as a child, you participated. Because some of you... Uh, young people participated in create in, in creating the narrative that your dad was a deadbeat dad because you were on mom's team for one, but for two, dad might have brought structure with and discipline, and you knew you didn't want that discipline, so you played along, and you cre- and you helped the narrative. You were just as much to blame as everybody else, but you were younger, so. You get you kind of get a pass, but after you know the difference between right and wrong, you don't get a pass. So, this is a conversation that y'all have because a lot of times we don't talk about when men and women get older. They look at their dad's experience completely differently. That's why you see a lot of adults. You know have this love hate reverence for their mom and then they have this especially if their father's actually a good guy they have this almost breakdown moment where they get it they get how unfair it was and they get that it wasn't true and it wasn't real and they get how much they lost in in that in that process being spiteful and vindictive and they have that breakdown moment also thinking to themselves like I get it because now I see it's affected me and I I don't want it to affect my children and now I see what I missed out on and I'm sorry. 
because a lot of young adults and grown men and women have realized they got played. And you, like they say, you can't choose your family, but it's hard when you get played by your family. It's actually very much so a, 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 a mind game when, when the person that you revere or, or put on a pedestal the most, your mother is the one guilty of this. Because back in the day, guys were deadbeats for, for a lot of reasons. Now, DNA is in a place, so it's different. You know, they got people who were said who would who were considered deadbeats that turned out not to be these people's father. You know, they got people who were considered deadbeats who who mom flew somewhere and flew this other place and just basically disappeared. But the narrative is dad was a deadbeat when you know, and dad's my mom, mom's a kidnapper. So you can easily be these things. And a lot of times, it's hard to make that, um, that, that assessment. Because in some ways, a lot of us are programmed to, to a, into well into our adult years to, to not critically think about the situation. So um, I think this is enough because it's like a 15-minute video. So... We'll be done with this one. Y'all take care. Peace.